In this video, I'm gonna show you how to properly install a scupper flashing on a torch down roof. Let's get into it. A scupper is a piece of flashing that's bent in such a way to allow water to enter and exit through the parapet wall. A scupper generally allows water drainage for a large area of water, so it's super important that we get the details done correctly. If you can imagine like a thousand or two thousand square foot roof might have just one scupper drain. That means if there's one small hole on the scupper, if there's one small failure, it could lead to huge leaks. The other reason that it's important to pay special attention to scuppers is because we're trying to bond a bitumen asphalt surface to a sheet metal surface and that's always difficult to do anytime we have incompatible or different materials bonding together. So we want to make sure that we take a few extra steps to make sure we get this critical area of a roof done correctly. There's multiple different ways of doing this one area. The way we've developed with our manufacturer, I think is a really solid and bulletproof way of doing it. We have done other systems in the past, which has worked, but really I think we've fine tuned it to great place. And I want to show you all those details today. Let us get into it. Uh, the first step in the process is going to be installing our target piece. Now, similar to our drains, you can watch that video. When we're installing scuppers, what we want to do is install the scupper first then bring our field and burn on top of that. So uh, we're gonna be starting with our self-adhered base layer. This is Polyglass's mid-ply. The way you wanna measure this is put your scupper down. You wanna make sure you have at least six inches past each side of your scupper here. So this is gonna be sufficient to get a good sandwich between your torch and your smooth mid-ply. Keeping half the field on, we're gonna fold it back remove the adhesive backing then slowly put this on getting a nice tight corner there now you can see here this is kind of what we're trying to avoid if we didn't install this target patch we would be installing our scupper on top of this joint but we want to make sure that we have a nice uniform finish to have a nice smooth transition So we've got our base layer installed. This is probably the simplest step in the process. The next step is going to be install our scupper flashing. Anytime we're bonding an asphalt bitumen based product to a metal, a sheet metal or galvanized, we want to make sure that we prep that metal to ensure optimal adhesion because opposite materials don't really like to bond together. Anytime galvanized metal comes out of the factory, it's coated with an oil and has some residue on it which doesn't allow for good bonding. So the first thing we want to do is actually wash this off with some vinegar or metal etching solution. Let me show you how to do that. So in order to prep our scupper and actually any flashing for that matter, whether it's low rise pipe flashing, T-tops or scuppers, what we want to do is first of all, scuff it up with an abrasive brush. And you can either do it by hand. We like these cup, I don't know what they're called, but they're essentially a bristle brush. And you just want to give it a light scratch. Now we want to do it on both sides. You can see the reflectivity here as opposed to kind of the matte finish on the bottom. We want to have that roughness in order to have a better adhesion between our torch and our flashing. All right, so we've got the front done. Now, this doesn't mean that we're actually complete. What we want to do is actually do the back. I'm going to show you why later on, but we want to prep the back similar to what we did in the front. All right, now we've got the back brushed up. Our last step in this prep work is actually to apply a vinegar solution. All this is is regular white vinegar you can buy over the counter. You can also use a metal etching solution. Vinegar does the same exact thing. It's organic, cheaper, easier to find, and it's not as rough on your hands when you're working with it all day. Make sure we have a decent coverage over the entire thing. And what this is gonna do is really eat away at those chemicals that are leftover residue from the factory. So now that you've got the whole thing wet, you just wanna leave this, you can either tap it dry 
or just put it to one side. We like to do all our metal prep work prior to starting the project. Get all your metal flashing prepped, put it to one side and you'll be ready to go. Uh, now that our metal is dry, before we do anything else, what we want to do is take these corners and round these off. What this is going to do is it's going to give us a smoother transition between our torch and our metal. And what this will do is protect the torch down material throughout the years, preventing these corners to poke through the material itself. So that's it again, you, know, you can see they're all done a little bit differently, but the important thing is to take that sharp corner off. Now we're ready to prime. Again, we're gonna be using an asphalt primer. What this is gonna do is give it a coat of asphalt prior to us torching on top of it, which will ensure a good adhesion. And you wanna make sure you get that scuffing and that vinegar etching done before you do this. Again, you wanna make sure you get a nice solid coat similar to this. And we're gonna be doing the front and the back. All right, now that we have this all primed, we're gonna leave this to one side and let it dry before we start installing it. Now that we've got our flashing primed, etched, and prepped, we're ready to install it. Now the reason we, we wanna prep the back similar to what we do in the front is you can see this smooth actually has a film of torch down on it. So when we install this and this gets heated up, this is actually gonna melt and bond to the back of this flashing right here and create an amazing bond. So essentially what we'll have is the back of this bonded, the front of it bonded, so that metal is sandwiched between two layers of asphalt torch down material and we'll get a real nice bond going. What we wanna do is install it using round cap roofing nails. These nails are a little bit shorter for our demo, uh, but we usually like to use inch and a quarter nails. These are electro galvanized. You want to make sure that you're using the same material so if your scupper flashing is galvanized make sure your nails are also galvanized and we're going to be installing nails every two to three inches on center this may seem like a lot but what it actually does it prevents excessive expansion and contraction in the metal your metal is going to want to expand and contract faster than the asphalt material itself so nailing it down every two to three inches is going to prevent excessive expansion and contraction and will ensure that those metals do not separate over time. Now that we're done nailing this, you can see that we installed it using a staggered pattern every three inches. That way we'll get a nice tight scupper going and then once we have the torch installed on top, we won't have too much expansion. We're ready to start installing our first layer of torch down. So we're gonna be doing this in, in two sections. The first one is gonna be installed on the roof base, going up the parapet wall. The second one would be coming down the parapet wall, covering this and coming down on the roof field. Similar to any time we install roofing along our parapets, our base layer is gonna be coming up past this can strip about two to three inches. Then the layer on top will be coming down. So we're gonna be using the same pattern here while installing the scupper. Now that we've got this back half torched down already, what we want to do is cut this opening for our scupper before we torch this side on. You don't need to worry about keeping this top strip because when we install our torch down from the top, it's going to be covering this area and coming down onto our roof. Anytime you're torching, like I always say, it's just as much of an art as it is a science. Uh, you can watch our other videos on how to properly heat up the membrane. You want to make sure you don't overheat it or underheat it. You have to get it hot to the correct temperature to make sure you have good adhesion and at the same time you're not damaging or burning through the membrane. So we've got our base installed on our roof. The next step is we're gonna be installing our 
uh, torch down cap sheet on top of our parapet wall and coming onto our field. We've marked out these areas six inches past our can strip, so this is how far we're actually gonna be coming out. So what we need to do right now is actually make what we call relief cuts. So we have a can strip here and no can strip here because scuppers come at a 90 degree angle. But the rest of our roof we have this 45 degree angle can strip that's installed. We're going to be making relief cut in opposite directions in order to make this transition from this 45 down to this 90 degree angle and while making sure that we're still waterproof. So this is a trickier transition. Again, just make sure your cuts are opposite so if you've got one cut at the bottom the other cut needs to be on the top so that they overlap properly. So we've got our relief cuts made here for our can strip transitions. We also have our cut made for the scupper. What we like to do is cut it at a 45 degree angle, roughly. This allows proper water drainage here and stops water from building up back here. You can imagine if we didn't cut this out, water would kind of pool right here and we would create a lip. We don't want to do that. We want to create a clear path for the water to flow. So these are going to be cut at a 45 degree angle. Now, in reality, this piece right here is not as important as you may think, because even if water were to get underneath here, it would be stopped right here. However, doing this gives us a solid bulletproof way of roofing where we're not only relying on one layer of roofing, but we have multiple layers in our most vulnerable area of our roof giving us double, triple protection where it really counts. Let's start torching. The last step in the process to finish our scupper off, being that this is a very vulnerable area, there's a lot of water traveling here and doing a lot of repairs throughout the years, we've realized that scuppers tend to leak the most. We do one last step to really ensure that this area does not leak for years to come. That's applying a coat of Poly Flash 1C. This is a polyglass product. We found great success using it. So we're gonna be using Poly Flash 1C coupled with a layer of polyester mesh. So we want to first measure off our polyester about three inches bigger on each side than the scupper opening itself. So we like to cut at a 45 degree angle so that way when we do install it it looks something like this and we're protecting this corner. So we've got this cut prepped ready to go. What we want to do is apply a base layer first embed this on top, then apply a second coat of the Poly Flash 1C on top of that. So now that we've got our first layer of Poly Flash 1C applied, what we want to do is install the polyester mesh. We found the easiest way to do so is using plastic gloves and just setting this in with your hand to align it properly.
Now that we've got this set, we just want to apply another light coat of polyphosphate one c on top of that and call it a day. Now that we've got our Polyflash 1C applied, embedded in the polyester, this is the detail and the flashing that's going to last for years to come. Thanks for watching. Tune in on the next one. Guys, thanks for watching. We have a lot of other videos on this channel about torch down roofing. If there's anything that you like to do different, let us know below. We'd love to hear from you. Give us a like, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.